The attack on concert goers in Las Vegas Sunday night is considered the worst mass shooting in modern U.S. history. While families mourn the loss of their loved ones and politicians argue about how to prevent a similar attack in the future, Randy Spivey, CEO and founder of the Center for Personal Protection and Safety, is an expert at surviving such an attack. So, Randy, tell us how do people, uh, what do they have to do to be trained to face crisis situations and how do they respond differently than those who have not been trained? Yeah, you know, it's that's a great question. Uh, what we know from doing training for folks over many years uh, is that there's a huge difference between trained individuals and untrained individuals and in how they respond to a crisis. An untrained individual, when they go through something like the shooting that just occurred, a typical response is to be startled, afraid, and either lock up and hold on to somebody or just react. A trained individual is going to have a similar initial reaction where they're startled, afraid, but then they have a file on their mental hard drive that says, oh, here are my options. And there are basically three key options. Uh, you may have heard the term run, hide, fight. We use what we call the outs. First option is if you can, you want to get out. Uh, and clearly in this scenario, that was one of the you know, best options and one of the only ones they had to get out of the line of fire as quickly as possible to move uh, rather than just uh, sit there uh, and be a sitting duck. Uh, the second option, if you can't get out, then and particularly if you're talking about something a little more traditional of an office setting or a school setting, is what we call hide out and keep them out. When we say hide, we don't mean jump underneath a desk or jump under a table. We mean get to some place where you can barricade yourself and keep them from getting access to where you're at. And then the uh, third option is if you have no other option, then you're going to do what you can to protect yourself and defend yourself. Obviously, in this case where he's, you know, in a in a um, hotel on a 30-second floor, there's not much you can do to confront him. What, what about uh, confronting the gunman if you can? You know, a lot of people don't realize, in fact, uh, sometimes you hear the statement, the only way to stop a person with a gun is another person with a gun. And that's one option, and sometimes that works, but it's not necessarily the only option. And in a closed, confined area, it may not even be the best option. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're in a movie theater, and a guy walks down the aisle, in a closed, crowded, confined area where you have the opportunity to immediately, say, come up from behind them, two or three people come up from behind them and then tackle them. That's what we show in the video. Your job really is just to take control of their hands, and once you do, the crisis is over. It's what we saw happen in the incident with the congresswoman, Congresswoman Giffords, a couple years ago. You know, the shooter, he had shot her and several other people, and then he went to reload his handgun, and a brave individual reached out, grabbed his arm, pulled him down to the ground, and it was over. So they may not be able to stop them from shooting any shots, but we certainly don't need to see what happened in the Orlando nightclub shooting here a couple years ago, where one person in a closed, confined area shot over 100 people and killed 49. Now, we keep hearing about the extreme danger gap. What is the extreme danger gap, and what are our options should we find ourselves there? Yeah, you know, normally um, these shooting events are over with pretty quickly. And so we say before first responders arrive, if you find yourself in an extreme violence event, you're what we call an immediate responder. And from the time that violence begins until the police get there, you're inside what we call the extreme danger gap. And it's what you do or don't do during that extreme danger gap, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, or you know, 15 minutes, many times it's your actions that are, are, will determine, do you get out and do you survive it? Because if you think about even where you're sitting right now or where your viewers, if they, they pick up the phone, they dial 911, how long would it be before the police are in that room where they're sitting? Uh, you know, in, in a restaurant or a, you know, a movie theater, five to ten minutes, that could be a long time. And, and what should people avoid doing? Yeah, well, the first thing to avoid is freezing. That's why we say, and in fact, you even saw that with, and it makes total sense in this shooting at the concert, I've heard many, many people say for the first minute or so, they thought it was part of the concert or pyrotechnics and fireworks. Uh, and they didn't recognize that, okay, no, these are gunshots that are happening. Uh, some people might hear a car backfiring or something they think is a car backfiring, but really it's somebody with a gun. So the first thing you got to do is figure out and then you have to move into purposeful action. You can't freeze and, you know, we say when help is, you know, seconds count, uh, help is minutes away. And so you've got to be able to respond in the moment and know those three options. Get out, hide out, and take out. Well, Randy Spivey, those are some great suggestions and some advice for people who may in the future find themselves in a similar situation. So thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome. My pleasure.